Humboldt and I decided to review the Sonos amp. And we don't just review this amp, we put it on trial. But what does Sonos mean? We know what Sonos does, but what does Sonos mean? No one actually knows. But what we do know is that Sonos is a palindrome. What you ask is a palindrome? It's actually something that literally cannot be explained, but we can show you. Watch this. Whether it's read straight or flipped, it's still Wu Yang Wu. Kayak deed rotator noon race car Wu Yang Wu. Thanks, Attorney Wu. That's a palindrome. But the Sonos amp has a history, a dark history, a history of becoming a brick. Will this Sonos amp be a brick? Let's find out. So I came home and I saw Helmholtz sitting on the new Sonos amp that just arrived. So I decided to do a little quick unboxing. Let's take a look at what's inside the box of the Sonos amp. Get off there, Helmholtz. So the box comes wrapped in this useless sleeve, which I guess is cheaper to print than it is to actually put on the box, which is the first thing that Sonos is doing that's not Apple. And I think that's the real takeaway from the opening of this product is that they always wanted to be Apple. They always wanted to pretend to be Apple and they just missing the whole mark. So the first sleeve was pretty weak. Now you just have a, you know, a cardboard box and now we take it out and you got this sleek looking black amplifier. You can see it's got two inputs for left and right speakers in out for left, right from analog, a sub output, two network ports, HDMI output and power cable. And overall, it looks kind of good, but holding it, it's just cheap plastic. And cheap plastic is not what Apple is about, and it's not what Sonos was supposed to be about. But after the new CEO took over about five, six years ago, this is pretty much what uh, Sonos is putting out, things that don't look great. So let's take a further look at what's inside the box. So it comes with two sets of speaker banana plugs. Why? We don't know. Why aren't they just literally attached to the Sonos amp? No idea. But you can buy extra sets for $20 from Sonos. So I guess they're expecting you to lose these things. Why they weren't originally just fitted on there like everyone else does. Again, no idea. Sonos trying to be different, but not really making it a logical difference. Another mistake where Apple usually makes their differences logical. And then it comes with this little card that tells you how to get started. So let's take a look at what it really means to get started with the Sonos. How um, easy is it to connect to your network? Here we go, warranty cards, et cetera, et cetera. Let's move on. I did forget to mention it does come with a power cable so you can plug it into your wall. One important thing to note is that it's not a standard uh, power outlet, it's a figure eight. So. If you're going to go to AudioQuest, make sure you get a figure eight so that you can really blow the dynamics off of this thing. Okay, so we're at the point where we are connecting. We basically plug it in and it goes into its connection mode, as you can see here with the green light flashing, switching between white and green. So let's see what happens when we actually get our phone hooked up and see how easy it is to connect a Sonos amp to your existing system. Okay, so we take out our handy dandy Android phone. It's a Google Pixel 5a if you really care and it's searching and look at that no problem at all sonos amp just click add and you are oh no 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 you're not done yet it we told it was a sonos amp so now it's looking for the sonos amp not that easy boys and girls so it's looking and looking and we're going to speed this up because it looks for a while so after about two minutes it says continue oh that's great we'll just hit the continue button and we'll move on Thank you so much, Sonos, for making this so easy. And wait a second. There's an exclamation mark. What does that mean? Let's take a closer look because the Sonos, for some reason, did not simply find itself. Okay, not only can the mobile device not find the Sonos app, it says move it closer. As you saw in the video, we were almost touching. So let me just give you the long and short of this. Reset your phone, restart it, and then it seemed to be fine. Let's take a look at this video after we restarted our phone. So Sonos was not happy finding it. It had to say there's an eight digit pin needed for setup. And it's either on the back or the bottom of your Sonos amp. Okay, these make the Sonos amp. They should know it's on the back or the bottom, but they clearly don't. And Helmholtz was just getting warm sitting on the nice warm amplifier. So 
Let's go find out where this uh, digital 8-pin number is. Oh, yes. Bottom or the back? Well, it's clearly not in the bottom. That's all black. So let's take a look at the back. So looking at the back, there's no 8-digit pin. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Let's keep looking because Sono says it's on the bottom or the back. And we can't find it on the bottom or the back. So Sona's going for the super elegant, super cool look, decided to put a dark gray pin number right where my finger is on the back above the banana posts with the right speaker. And there's a little eight digit of pin there and that's where it's at, guys. Super dark, you can barely see it in the video and I've got a light blaring right on it. Real smart, Sonos. They're taking a step backwards. They're trying to be chic, but you're designing a product people need to use, not wear. Just when you think you're ready to start using it, you got an update that's going to take like 7 to 10 minutes to do it. So we do that. Then we'll come back later. Okay, so we're back and this is the Sonos amp. This is what we were showing you getting set up. These are the empty binding posts. You can get your speaker wire, connect them directly to your banana posts, and just plug them in. Why they're not physically connected is weird but maybe they're just trying to make money. The plastic has got this matte finish to it, which is kind of nice because you don't like shiny, but it also gets fingerprints on it. Not sure if it shows up that well here, but you can see some fingerprints and stuff. So it's gonna be a pain to keep this clean. Um, and got the little power button in the back. But there's a problem with the power button. I mean, it works, it turns the power on, but you can't use the Sonos amp without the software. So let's first go to our listening tests. And then after that, we're putting the Sonos on trial. Well, I can tell you after 600 hours of listening to Diane Bish through the Sonos amp, the Sonos amp is a great amplifier. It handled not only Diane Bish, but it handled power with a plum, 125 watts on tap, no issues at all powering any of the speakers I had on hand, including my reference Tannoy DC8s. And I will tell you that the amp is great. I mean, there's no reason to say, oh, there's a little bit of sibilance here. There was no sibilance, okay? This is a good amp and it amplified the music and it did a wonderful job with almost no discernible distortion. And I'll be honest, to these ears, and they're the best ears in the world, cranking it up very loud, I would say, having my speakers around 95 decibels, there was no discernible distortion from the amplifier. From the speakers, well, yeah, from the speakers, the turntable, whatever. But that's not the point. Diane Bish sounded great digitally, and the Sonos amp is a great amp. Let's put it on trial, though, because there's another problem, and it's not about the music. So Hamholtz was telling me after the listening tests, you know, he's like, what do we do if Sonos, like, say, either goes out of business or stops supporting their product? And I'm like, stop supporting their product? Out of business? Is this even possible? Well, unfortunately, stop supporting the product already happened. So previous Sonos amp owners, which wasn't called the Sonos amp, the Sonos Connect amp, uh, you're done. You can run some old software off an old phone, but you can't connect to a current system, and who knows when they're just going to say, done sayonara latest version of android or apple iphone is just not going to support the software and you can't use it same thing with this one it's got no way of playing any music without the software so for example sonos goes out of business okay it happened at least you got line one right a line one right back here baby you got a line one input and there's no button to select it this thing does not default to what's playing through it. You turn this thing on and you don't select line one and through the software, you're not getting any music. And that sucks. Period. Just sucks. So I think this new CEO of Sonos who's been there for about five or six years right now is focused on one thing and one thing only. Making money. He would love to brick these things once again. And that's just not how audiophilia works. 
you got to sit there and say, I've got this great amp. It's been around forever. Maybe the Sonos goes out of business, but I can still plug something else into it and listen to it. Or even Bluetooth something to it. You can't do anything like that with this amp without the software. So, Sonos, I convict you and sentence you to audiophile prison for 10 years or until you fix your products. Amen, sayonara, and I will see all of you soon. Do not buy the Sonos Connect amp, or oh, Sonos amp, the Connect amp, you can't get it all because it's garbage, it doesn't work anymore. But do not buy the Sonos amp unless you are so believing that this altruistic company has somehow, you know, coming through for you because they're not altruistic. But if you think they are, eh, you're a sucker. Go buy the amp. Otherwise, stay away from Sonos products. Stay away from the Sonos amp. If they can't make products that work without their software, then you're just buying a brick. Don't buy a brick. <laughs>